Welcome to this presentation. Today we're going to be talking about frames and the finite element formulation of frames. And we'll be doing that uh, quote unquote by hand as well as in MathCAD. So the math techniques we can use in, use in MathCAD you can also do by hand. Uh, it's all linear algebra, just ones with a computer and ones uh, by yourself right out on paper. All right, so we're going to be doing that today. Uh, for the setup here, go to the lecture materials folder. You can find the link below in the notes. Uh, in there, you can find folders for notes as well as MathCAD. And since we're doing the MathCAD, grab that uh, file download. Everything we're doing today should work, again, in MathCAD Express, the free version. Uh, you don't need a license for it. So that should work well for you. And then uh, notes as well as basically everything I'm going to be, you're going to see in the slides uh, with a little bit more text to, for explain things. So the finite element formulation of frames, uh, definition-wise, what are frames? That we're calling them structural members that have rigidly connected joints. So that where they connect here, different points on our frame, uh, either welted, welded, or bolted uh, at those points. So if we reduce this frame to several elements, uh, and we have nodes at all the connection points, we'd have six nodes, and then uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, Oops, I got four, five, six elements. All right, so notice the individual elements will experience rotation, lateral displacement, and axial deformation. All right, so these guys here will be as if we, if we had the distributed load on top and we had a point load on, on element six. Yeah, so point load on element six. Uh, we'd have, these would act like beams, so we'd have the lateral deflection as well as some rotation here at node two. And we have some axial deformation here um, for those receiving the load there. So this kind of involves everything, um, both axial um, loading as well as lateral loading as well. So the frame elements are a combination of axial members and beams. So we're going to put these together. We've already done the, the last two lectures, as you hopefully looked at, um, at, looked at them. Uh, we talked about axial members focused on that. And then it basically trusts a two-force member. And then we looked at beams where we had both the lateral loading and the rotation. So we're going to combine those here for our frames. All right, so let's look at a frame element. So we have the overall member here between nodes I and J up here. And uh, if we look at the uh, local uh, displacements, we have the axial, dis uh, axial displacement, so U sub I, because it's happening at node I, and 1. 1 is going to indicate the axial displacement here. Uh, UI2, 2 represents the lateral displacement that's happening. So that's going to be in our Y direction. Again, the X and Y here, lowercase, that's a local coordinates. So then if we go to UI3, that's going to be the rotation that's occurring at node I. So UI3, so 1, axial, 2, lateral, and 3, uh, rotation. And so if we look at node J, we see the same things going on there. So overall summary, each node has 3 degrees of freedom. We have axial displacement at nodes I and J, and that's represented by the 1. We have lateral displacement at nodes I and J, represented by a 2. And the rotation at nodes I and J, represented by 3. Right, and those are all in local displacements, lowercase letters indicating our local displacements. All right, so we need to transform this thing. We need to go from local coordinates to global coordinates. And uh, so we're going to do this relationship. We're going to have some transformation that take us from our local to our global coordinates. All right, so this is our transformation matrix. And if you can see, it looks hopefully a lot really similar to what we had um, used before, especially for trusses, as well as axial members. Uh, the thing that's different now is we have an extra row here for rotation um, piece because we now have the six by six because we have three um, degrees of freedom at one node, three degrees of freedom at the other node. So now we have a six by six four element as opposed to a four by four that we looked at before. All right, so that's where it comes from. I just want to highlight, big highlight here. Uh, some books use a transformation matrix that is the inverse or the transpose of the trust transformation matrix. So this one right here, so instead of negative sine theta, you'd have a negative sine theta over here. And the reason they do this is because they look at the transform matrix going from global to local as opposed to local to global like we are. Right, so just heads up with that. It's fine. It's just how it's just a little bit different. All right. So our local stiffness matrix for bending from the last lecture, right, we came up with 
uh, the local, so lowercase k, the bending stiffness matrix is this. Right? So we don't have any, we're not looking at anything here in the uh, axial uh, displacement. Uh, but then if we look at the local stiffness matrix for axial loading, that's all we have. We don't have any um, displacement laterally or rotation-wise. So we're going to combine those now and just add those together. So for a frame element, we're just going to add the bending to the axial. Right? Just add them up right? and put them together. So hopefully pretty straightforward there. So our global stiffness matrix, right? we were in local coordinates. This, this right here, this is local coordinates, so lowercase k there. And here we go to uppercase k. So we're gonna, that means our global stiffness matrix for frame element. Uh, we need the transformation matrix times our local stiffness matrix times the transform of the transformation matrix, right, or the inverse. 